You know, I, yeah. I'll be chained to you anytime. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Maybe. Maybe. She doesn't love me anymore. <laughs> and even if AI could get married, it could not please its wife in any way. Oh gosh. Because okay. it can't do anything. Hey friends, welcome to Fridays with Dave and Ashley here on the Exo Marriage YouTube channel where you get real marriage advice from real people just like us. And hey, if you're not already, do us a favor and head over to Instagram and follow us at Dave and Ashley Willis. We're putting some fun stuff there, reels, pictures, posts every day, and I think it would be an encouragement to you. Plus, you can communicate with us right there through Instagram. Today, we've got a great episode for you, three different segments. Ashley's going to tell you what they are. That's right. Our first one are seven common marriage killers, and some you may be like, yeah, that's totally what I would think. And some may surprise you. Our second segment, we are going to share with you guys our most popular Naked Marriage podcast episode. And it's a frisky one. So you definitely want to see what that is. You may already know. And then our last one, you got to watch till the end because we're challenging Dave once again. It's Dave against AI. We're going to ask him a really good question that has to involve you wives. So definitely stick around all the way till the end. In this first segment, we're going to talk about seven common marriage killers. And you guys, there's many more than seven, but sure. these we have seen in the work that we do and just living in the world, watching people who are married, being married ourselves. Like if we don't get these under control as married people, they really can be toxic to our marriage. So number one is ignoring your spouse. Yeah. And the biggest culprit is this right here. You know, like if your phone looks more important than your spouse in terms of how much you're looking at it, then you're ignoring your spouse. And it's not just the phone. It could be anything. It could be the TV. It could be whatever else. Uh, Friends. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, there are going to be times when you're preoccupied with something. We need to have a mindset of when my spouse enters the room, when my spouse starts to talk with me, then I let them know you're the most important person. You're the most important priority on earth. And I don't want you to feel like you have to compete for my attention with anything. All right. Number two is withholding sex from your spouse. Mm -hmm. This is a big one. It's also a controversial one because sometimes people almost weaponize that statement because there's biblical, this is biblical that we shouldn't withhold from each other. It's the weaponizing really that we're talking about. Obviously a husband or a wife has every right to say like, no, not right now. Absolutely. Um, yes. But what we're talking about isn't that you, you sometimes say not right now. It is that there is a perpetual pattern, usually with an intent of having some kind of power dynamic over mm-hmm. your spouse yeah. of saying, no, I'm going to punish you by saying no over and over again because I'm intentionally starving you or it's not important to me at all. And so I'm deciding for both of us that sex just isn't going to be at all a priority in our marriage. Yeah. And when that starts to happen... Uh, it really makes the other spouse who's desiring sexual intimacy more feel rejected on the deepest emotional level as well. And it causes so much damage to the marriage. All right, number three. This is an obvious one, but I want to make sure we stay yeah. loud and clear that we do not in marriage or, or really anywhere, but especially in marriage, we do not have any license, any ability to physically hurt one another. There is never a time, never a place where that is okay. Even sexually. I know yes, like sometimes yes. during sex, people... You know, people get off on on pain. Pushing the limits. Right. They have to have a safe word. You know, here's a safe word for you. How about stop? All right. We are on number four. And this is one where people, we often grade ourselves much better than we really are doing. And that is, we shouldn't speak negatively about our husband or wife to other people including family members. Okay. And you guys, I literally just counseled with someone where this is one of their issues because sometimes we're like, well, I don't have anyone else to talk to. And I love my family. I'm very close to my family. Totally get that and be close to your family. That's wonderful. And And really that's the goal that all of us have. But when it comes to issues with your spouse, unless it's like a dangerous, like illegal issue. Okay. I think there's probably maybe that asterisk there, but most of the time, like if you're just having a week where you are annoyed to no end with them, or maybe they did break your trust in some way and you're frustrated and disappointed, your family members are really not the best place to go. And here's why, because the hope is that you get help for this and you guys overcome that thing. And then all of a sudden you've forgiven your spouse and you guys are moving forward and getting help and healing, but your family members don't forget what that person did. They don't forget what your spouse did. So all of a sudden now, even though you've moved forward, your family can't move forward. And then you have to deal with in-law issues. And so, So we have to be so aware of how we're speaking about our spouse. 
So good. Number five kind of goes right piggyback with number four. And that's yeah. when you allow other people to speak negatively about your spouse. Yeah. We've been there, honestly, like early yeah. in our marriage. Oh, this yeah. is something that we're going to talk about in an upcoming book about in-law relationships. Early in our marriage, you know, we had some family dynamics where there were there were relatives that felt like it was their right to just badmouth, yeah. you know, our, our spouse. And right. it caused a lot of tension trying to figure out what those boundaries looked like. But what we found in that is you got to stand up for each other. Yes. You absolutely have to. And you have to let the people... People in your life know, listen, you, you keep you can have your opinions, but if they're negative about my spouse, you need to keep those to yourself. You know, I remember one time I was at Chick-fil-A and I was sitting next to these group of women and one of them started saying something, probably trying to be funny, but it was negative about her husband. And then before you knew it, every woman, it was like this round, you know, circle of each of them saying these negative things about their husband. And some of you watching this are like, well, that's just in jest, whatever. Maybe. Maybe. But is that really what you'd want your husband saying about you? Yeah. You want him to go talking about the ball and chain? You know, I, yeah. I'll be chained to you anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right, number six. We shouldn't keep secrets Never, from each other no. unless it's a surprise party. That's like a one-time thing. Yeah, don't but. keep secrets, guys. Like your marriage thrives when there's total transparency and trust. That's why we call our podcast The Naked Marriage. It's not just yeah. the physical nakedness, but it's a picture of total honesty and trust between a husband and a wife, which is how God designed marriage to be. So if you're keeping hidden passwords, hidden bank accounts, hidden search histories, hidden conversations, hidden anything, you're out of bounds and you need to bring that to light and your marriage will be better for it. Number seven, speaking unkindly or harshly to one another. The Bible says we should speak with kindness and tender hearted toward one another. Sometimes we can say something that's technically true, yeah. but if our tone is harsh, then we're being disrespectful and we're actually pushing our spouse away. And so don't let that negativity take root in your marriage. That's right. And if your spouse tells you that your tone is harsh, I would say, believe them. Like, what do they have to gain by saying that? You may not mean to come off this way. Maybe you're not mad at me, but you pretty much sound like you're mad at me and the snarl on your face says you're mad at me. So we need to believe them when they come to us with that concern. All right. That's, that's such a valuable list, guys. So safeguard your marriage from all seven of those. Now for the next segment, we got something really fun for you. Our most popular episode of the year so far, surprise, surprise, has to do with oral sex and you yep. frisky people can't frisky. Get enough of it. So here is a clip from the Naked Marriage podcast episode entitled "More Oral Sex, Please." I think the reason why it's it's loved by many is because it's a beautiful and intimate way, and really in a lot of ways a selfless way, sure, to serve your spouse in a way sexually that's focused completely on their pleasure, right? And and in that sense, it's this uh, beautiful act of of saying, "I want to, I'm deriving pleasure." By giving you pleasure right. and by seeing how much pleasure you take in this. And, and because I love you so much, seeing you pleased, it brings it brings me pleasure. And it's, it's arousing and enjoyable for me as well, sure. whether it's done as an act of foreplay or it's the main event. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think, you know, it's obvious why that could be found as, as pleasurable. I think some of the reasons why people have... Um, Issues with it is one, they have mis misunderstanding of what the Bible teaches, and so they've been taught that it's right. shameful or dirty or wrong or even sinful. I think um, sometimes, you know, regrets or wounds from the past, uh, of, with, with any any type of regret, sexual sin or abuse that happened in the past can sure. create its own kind of baggage, and sometimes that's tied to the act of oral sex. And then for some, you know, they maybe they just have, you know, in, insecurity about um, their spouse seeing them in that way. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but there, there are lots, lots of, and some people might just not like it in general. They're like, you know what, this, this isn't my thing. You know, mm -hmm. I don't enjoy giving it or I don't enjoy receiving it. And that can really create some tension where one spouse loves receiving it and the other spouse just refuses to, to do that. And that can, some people write us and they feel like that's a real sticking point in their marriage. It's oh, like, yeah. like, I love this. I mean, this is like, when I feel closest to my spouse and most pleasure and all these things, and they just think it's dirty and don't want to do it. And, and it's created tension, not only in our sex life, but, but other, otherwise. So kind of thousand foot view. Those are, those are some of the issues. Yeah. And, you know, one thing with oral sex, we, we, we hear from all kinds of people is that for women in particular, you know, especially over this past year, I've heard from a lot of women that may have trouble climaxing during intercourse because it's just not as, you know, the act of intercourse isn't as 
they're not getting aroused as easily. But when it right. comes to oral sex, they are because it, it's just more, you know, stimulating, I guess. And so for some women, that that is the very act that helps them to actually have an experience, a climax. And there's some women out there where they've never even considered that. And they, you know, there's a lot of women that have a hard time with intercourse alone experiencing it. Yeah, climax. and there's no That's shame. Very, that. very common. Just hear yeah. us on that. Many, if not most women, need yeah. additional clitoral stimu- stimulation to right. reach climax beyond just just intercourse. Right. Um, and that can happen through oral sex. That can happen through stimulation in other ways. But whatever right. it takes to help your lovely lady reach climax, guys, be willing to do that. And ladies, be open to receiving that so that right. you can e- experience all of the, the fullness of pleasure God intended sex to have. Hey friends, thanks for sticking around to our final segment today, where it is me versus the AI robot trying to give better marriage advice than me. Now, we did this last week, and according to Ashley, our our judge here, who might be a little biased because she is sleeping with me and not with AI, (laughs) she said I was the winner, which makes me undefeated over artificial intelligence. Yes. And how this works is... I'm asked the marriage advice question, AI, chat boxes, and ask that same question. And Ashley's going to read both answers and decide who answered it better. So, Well, you're going to say your answer, and then I'll read AI's answer. Right, yeah, of course. All right, so the question, sweetie, is what is one tip for getting your wife better gifts? One tip for getting your wife better gifts. First off, have a wife, which is something AI can't do. (laughs) He loves it. Because AI can't get married. And even if AI could get married... It could not please its wife in any way. Oh, gosh. Because okay. it can't do anything. It doesn't even have a body. So I'm already ahead right okay. there. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, listen. You have to pay attention to your wife. You have to listen to her. You have to watch what she's drawn to. And then you have to not only give her things that she wants, but you have to find ways to surprise her because ladies love a surprise. I remember a line from a movie once and Sean Connery said it, so you know it has to be true. He said, the key to a woman's heart is an unexpected gift at an unexpected time. And I thought, That's pretty good. hey, it's not bad. So guys, listen, your lady will expect a gift on her birthday and anniversary, and you should definitely surprise her and get her something really thoughtful. But do something thoughtful when it's completely unexpected to say, hey, I was thinking of you and I got you this thing. So that's a, those are just a, a few things. Now let's see what our computer overlords have to say. All right. AI, here's exactly what AI said. It says, listen actively. Pay attention to what she says throughout the year. Make notes of things she mentions, wanting or needing, as well as her interests, hobbies, and preferences. This will give you ideas for gifts that are thoughtful and tailored to her interests and needs. So far, you guys are like the same. All right. Additionally, you can also try to get input from her close friends or family members to gain more insight into her likes and dislikes. Don't be afraid to ask her directly for suggestions or to share what she would like as a gift. Like, ask her. Remember, the best gifts come from the heart and are a reflection of your relationship with her. I I feel like that's a tie. Like, you guys were uh, right there together. I mean, okay. he did, you know, he or she, this AI entity... So talk to family members, which I think is good. But I will also say you have to know that these family members really do maybe are good at like knowing those things. So both really, maybe you inched it out. I I don't know. I feel like you're on the same page. So so it's a tie. So basically pretty soon the Naked Marriage podcast is going to be hosted (laughs) by Ashley Willis and an AI robot. Oh my goodness. Who's smarter than me. That is not true. (laughs) You're the smartest, sweetie, always. (laughs) (laughs) A few moments later. No, that was pretty good, AI. That was pretty good. That was pretty, that was good. pretty good. So a rematch is in the works. Um, and actually, next time, I'm going to have Ashley against AI. On the hot seat. Yeah. All right. I love it. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, thank you so much for tuning Artificial in Artificial intelligence versus Ashley intelligence. Oh, they AI versus AI. Mm-hmm. Thank you all so much for joining us this time on Fridays with Dave and Ashley. We hope you're enjoying all these different segments. Write us at DaveAndAshley.com or DaveAndAshleyWillis.com or at ExoMarriage.com and let us know what you're liking. And, and here in the comments, probably the easiest place is just to go right here on YouTube. Let us know what you're liking about this and also give us your ideas of what you want to see more from us. And so thank you guys so much. God bless you. We'll see you next time.